Greetings fellow Earthlings, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech. And today, I'm bringing you a video which I actually thought I was recording, but I wasn't. I did have um, some uh, Akko uh, ASA white on black caps on here with some Mocha Flamingo um, switches. I really had not done much to this keyboard since I purchased it, so I figured why not go ahead and do a mod video? I've been wanting to mod this keyboard for a while. It was great stock, but I think we can bring out some more sound out of it. And I'm also going to be trying to Franken switch on there. So in case you guys don't notice, this is the, um, I've already got it open, but this is the Ducato um, VN66. Uh, Epo Maker sells it as their Theory 66, but they have updated the firmware. I don't have one personally. I do know that they have been releasing firmwares then days later saying, don't apply that firmware. So um, KP Republic has this board for a very good price. So if you're interested in it, I'd take a look there as opposed to Epo Maker. That said, uh, for you South North facing folks, uh, this one's a bit of a doozy. Um, as you can see, you actually have the top row is North facing and the first LED is actually sitting above the, um, the plate. So you're going to have to take that in consideration. You're going to need a switch that has a SMD window or you're going to have to make one yourself for it. So uh, since I'm going to be trying out some of my Franken switches that already have windows, it's not going to be an issue. Now this kit in particular does not come with much. Um, the stabilizers are decent, but I am going to do a uh, plumber's mod to them. But as far as the interior goes, I already unplugged the uh, daughter board cable. It includes this really thin layer of what feels like poron, but I can't say that it does much to, um, to dampen the sound that it's in here. Now, if it wasn't for the studs and the ribs, I would probably just go ahead and uh, cut out a kill mat um, or I'm sorry the mass loaded vinyl to put in here uh, but I have another kit that I think it's going to work in so whenever I come across a situation like this where we have a lot of ribs I have found that silicone usually works pretty good especially if you stay underneath the ribs I'm also going to try to cut out a couple of more um, gaskets and see if I can uh, I don't think I'm going to add too much flex uh, to the keyboard because it really doesn't have much flex to begin with. I mean, it sits on these gaskets, but they are they are pretty stiff and they don't have much of a give. Um, the only other thing I could think of is taking them out and trying to... Uh, oh, they're glued on there. Yeah, I don't... See, these are some really thick gaskets. So perhaps I'll replace them with softer gaskets that might actually give us a little bit more push, but we're gonna see. One of the first things though that we're gonna do is gonna do a silicone pour. Now, a lot of folks are like, oh, a silicone pour, I don't know, that's kind of scary. Really nothing to be scared of. Um, you're really not gonna be dealing with much. The, the most important thing that you wanna do is make sure that you tape off parts that you do, do not want to have silicone on it. Um, now, like for here around the battery, it does not look like we have a barrier so what we're gonna do is we're probably just gonna add a piece of foam in there but we're gonna go ahead and do all the rest of these and I'm gonna go ahead and look like I know I have a bigger roll of tape around here but this will have to do for the moment I'm gonna tape off the spots where silicone can get out because that's where we don't want it leaking basically we're covering up any holes where that silicone might leak out of because we don't want to be making a mess all over the place all right
and even with I'm still gonna use a box on top of this now I am gonna guess that we're gonna be in the 50 milliliter range I like to guess a little bit over so what I'm gonna do silicone comes in two parts A and B or at least the silicone rubber that is recommended to use. Um, I like using the one that has no toxic fumes. I, I don't smell anything out of these. Uh, but basically it's a one-to-one -one ratio. You mix it up. Um, I measure it in a cup. Make sure that I have enough. Like I said, I'm gonna go with 50. So I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna go with 60. So I'm gonna get 30 of each, pour it in there, and then stir it up. So let's go ahead and start with the A. Probably gonna have some extra, but I'd rather have extra than have to make a whole another batch. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour. So I reach 30. Yeah, it's right on 30. All right. Go ahead and pour that in. Put the cap on here. I need the B. So I'll go ahead and use the, uh, the tool here. I'm sorry, I'm a bit out of, out of camera angle. I'm going to use the tool to basically make sure I get as much of a out of there as possible now if there is no battery or if you want to remove the battery a good way to guess the weight and this is thanks to uh, my name is Anthony is to fill up the uh, keyboard the bottom case with water and then pour it out and see how much you got and that's about as much silicone as you'll need for micro uh, milliliter wise so um, a little trick from uh, my name is Anthony. I don't do it because I'd rather not take the chance on taking the battery out. That's just me. Um, I've even poured silicone around the battery. It, it's usually not an issue. So we're going to go ahead now and do B. I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to go up to 30. That. And if you go a little bit over, a little bit under, just try to just try to be as close as possible. All it's going to do is make it either a little weaker or a little stronger. So let's go ahead and get this in here. That's usually just easier to scrape the sides as you go along. Kind of just bring it down. Because if you try to let it pour, it can take forever. And thing is, this starts setting within, well, depending on which type you get, it can start setting quite quickly. So I would try to be as prepared as possible. Make sure that you have all your utensils and tools available before you start. That way you're not going to be hunting for something while this is starting to set. So as soon as we got the majority in there, because yes, there's going to be a little bit left behind. That's why I'm like, you know, let's try to be as as close as possible because it's not going to be exact so i'm going to wash that out but for right now let's go ahead and stir now we want to stir this a good couple of minutes uh i've found silicones that take five minutes to stir i found other silicones that's basically mix and stir 30 seconds and you're good to go so i try to find a middle ground uh, between the two now i'm going to go ahead and pour this and set it aside then i'm going to go ahead and we're going to um and do both PCB and we're going to add PE foam. We're going to tighten it down. I didn't realize the plate and the PCB are actually loose. Uh, we're going to Tempest tape mod it and we're also going to add a layer of PE foam and bring out some pop. Now I'm also going to be using some Franken switches that I created for this called Holy Polars um, and we're going to be trying a new set of Miso. Uh, double shot keycaps that I got so and we're gonna change the, the color on the knob all right basically once you have what looks like a almost like a glue milky consistency like there's no spots you don't see any you know spots of of clear basically or any spots of only um, 
of only uh, opaque, basically. Does this one doesn't take much at all? I found that 30 seconds to a minute of stirring it is more than sufficient. It gives you what you need, and then, like I said, you got to work with this quick. So we want to go ahead and start getting that in there. Basically, we want to just stay below the ribs. I mean, that's that's the trick to it, for the most part. We stay inside of the ribs. And sometimes, I mean, even on this one, we might be able to go just a little bit above the ribs so that we can actually have a one piece. Uh, though doing a one piece is not always the easiest. So, as you can see, as we get closer to the front, there's gonna be a lot less space. And we don't wanna take away too much space because we're already don't have much space for flex. And we're gonna try to add Maybe a little bit of flex. I don't think we're gonna be able to do much, but but that's a discussion for another time and place. Oh my goodness. It looks like I mixed exactly enough. So 60, mil 60 millimeters seems to be, if you're not gonna be uh, doing around the battery, which the batteries can, you know, expand, obviously, but you know, the silicone will give it some weight. But I, like I said, I think we can just put couple pieces of uh, EVA foam in there and we'll be okay but I think that I mean we got spaces for the rip for the ribs the two studs that go in to the plate so I think we're actually gonna be good on this all right so we're gonna go ahead and put this out there where the fan is so it'll dry up quicker while we do the rest of the work now let's uh or we get to the gaskets and the stabs. Let's see what we got for the plate now. Oops. I don't know how that ended up over there, but we're not in the right spot, buddy. There was gobs of uh, stable of uh, grease on these. Um, I don't recall it being like this, but as you can see. plate and the PCB are loose. I'm assuming it's just that one screw, but we will shortly find out. All right, so thankfully we do have Again, thankfully we do have a pour-on pad. I I do like this if they don't have this pad, uh, the plate pad, if you want to call it that. I usually like to make my own. I think it creates little acoustic chambers for each of the switches. Is that scientific? No, it's just how I feel about it. So in this situation, we're going to go ahead and we've got a piece of PE foam. And my rule is always, if you can see your skin, your hand through the, P the PE, you're, you're fine. If it's any thicker than that, you run the risk of perhaps causing some damage to the um, to the switches when you pull them, push them in. All right, so I don't seem to have necessarily a straight edge I can go with. holes are going to need to kind of make their own way but it looks like we've got this on without much uh, issue let's go ahead and put these screws back in oh yeah we've got the knob when you got a knob I like to stick it off off the corner of whatever surface I'm working on so it makes it that much easier to work with the knob without it getting into uh, getting in my way no more plate rattle very nice, very nice. All right. Now after this, even though we do have the PE foam, perhaps is a little bit of overkill, but it's no fun if it's not overkill, right? We're just gonna cut some strips as uh, 
basically landing pads for the stabilizers um, so that that'll reduce any any tapping sounds it might create when um, you know hitting the plate so now we've got the pads for all the stabilizers one more thing we're going to do before putting away this tape is we're going to do four more strips probably won't need all four of them straight line on these things all right what we're doing now is we're going to do the tape plate stabilizer mount um, band-aid mod i guess i don't know if it has an actual now for these, most of these pieces can actually cut in three, but we'll probably just do two. We cut them in three, we gotta be really exact. So again, I'm cutting out four strips of this. Uh, this is a 3M Durapur, Durapur, um, because it's breathable. Um, I don't know if that makes a difference. What we're gonna do now is basically just tighten the, um, Make the, the tolerances on the plate a little bit tighter so that the housing or the whole stabilizer housing um, can sit on here with some with some tightness. You know, it's not going to be loose or rattling around. It's going to have a good anchor point um, because the stabilizer needs to be well stable. All right, I think we have enough pieces here. The way we're going to do this, like I said, we don't necessarily need half a strip. A third usually is enough. We're going to put this on the side of the stabilizer where there is no notch. Because that's where the, um, the stabilizer is actually going to grasp onto. right here and obviously you don't need to make the piece of tape that uh, wide as long as it, there's enough uh, surface for the stabilizer to clip on as you can see there is there you're going to be all right so next I think we got an extra piece of tape so we can go ahead and put this tape away. And now we're going to use our handy dandy medical tape. Uh, medical tape, plumber's tape. Uh, we were using medical tape. Uh, all right. Now this is the fun part. For some people, this does take a little bit of time and effort to get used to. Um, this, it's called silicone tape or plumber's tape. It's not technically tape as it, there is no adhesive it is more of a it's almost like a liquid form of silicone or ptfe which is the same materials that we use um, to lubricate our stabs and switches with so what this does and kerbal i'm four months in um on that keyboard uh, kerbal had asked me uh regarding how long will will these work because i mean he was right that these are meant for wrapping around pipe threading you know so how long will they last on here i have a set that is four months in i told him at six months i would check again on a set that i use on a regular basis uh, i try to do two to three wraps and no more than that um, we're trying to increase the tolerances but we're not trying to make it so tight that it's not going to work so any excess we want to cut off we want to make sure that we don't go above the bend and we want it to look nice and nice and even we don't if there's any bumps or anything this stuff is really cheap just redo it i mean it's it's only going to cause problems you don't want it too tight because then it's going to become mushy you don't want it too loose usually two to three bends will do uh two or three wraps will do for these um cheaper stabilizer bars i mean stock stabilizer bars so keep the uh the tape below 
the elbow, although we are going to want to, when we add uh, lubricant, we do want to go above the elbow because that's where it's going to be touching the plastic of the housing and rubbing. So take, cut a little piece off. But yeah, this whole part for some people, I mean, I can't really say there's a trick to it. I've just been doing it so often. See, I'm right below the elbow. That's about as close as you want to get to the elbow. There's two and there's three. And at that point, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the side. Try to get it nice and even on the bar. And then make sure there's nothing at the end. We wanna make sure that end is nice and flat. any chance of interference. All right, so we got three more to go here. Like I said, a lot of people don't like doing this, but um, when I first started doing the uh, the Holy Mod, um, well, first I was just using regular tape, but then I actually, because I was told, hey, um, get this stuff. This is the uh, Kapton tape, and I also was told to get this stuff, which I forgot what this one is called. Both of these are uh, tapes that are supposed to make the Holy Mod better, but no matter which tape I used, I found that after time, that piece of tape would come out from the housing and start causing binding issues. Um, so thankfully I never did that to a solder board because <laughs> I would be quite uh, upset about that. But um, I, I have never found a tape that stayed inside of the housing after you know time of usage, especially if it's on your daily board, it's going to come off. I mean, it's just, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter more of when. So that's why I went from the Holy Mod to the Plumber's Tape Mod. All right, three wraps. I'm basically just trying to almost make a second skin for it. Now, there's another mod that I've tried, and I actually still have on a couple of keyboards, um, but these were sta stabilizers that were literally so rattly, so loose. Um, I used a wire heat shrink wrap on them, and with enough lubrication, they actually work, and they work fine. I mean, they're, you can tell they're, they've definitely, because I mean, they don't bind. But they're definitely, there's no noise. It's just up and down. I mean, they might be a little bit slower, but there is absolutely no rattling. I thought that was interesting. I would love to see a thinner version of the heat wrap that's meant for stabilizers that you could just slip on, throw on the air, the, your hair dryer or a hot air gun on it real quick and just have it shrink two size and already be pre-sized like you know have three different size three different gauges I, I guess you would say so that you can go okay this one's really thin I need the thicker one or I need the medium one or I just need the really skinny one but I think that would be a product that would just it would take any stabilizer up 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 a level um, and I don't think it would cost that much to produce so on this one <clears throat> On this video, for the most part, I'm going to try to go through everything instead of skipping over the, the, the parts because I'm trying to inform uh, as to how I'm doing things, why I'm doing things. Um, and of course, as always, if you guys have any questions, uh, either put them down in the comments below um, or jump on over the Discord or uh, our budget keeps and I'll see what I can do as far as answering that question goes. All right, we got two more stabilizers left. Let's make these fun.
any of those little stringers around, they will start unwinding like a sweater, like a thread on a sweater. But you should be surprised once we add um, some grease to these, they, uh, they really, they do become like a second skin onto the wire, which is really nice. Like I said, everyone has their own way. Um, I still haven't perfected it. I'm able to get it on a little bit quicker than others, but uh, everyone will find what works best for them and as far as getting this, get, basically getting that first stick, that first roll. That one's the one that's kind of a pain. After that, it goes pretty easy. Stabilizers are ready to go. I'll go ahead and put the tapes away. I said it's not that difficult of a task, but uh, catching that first um, that first wrap can be a bit, a bit of a pain. So I can definitely understand that with some folks. So um, I wish I could say, "Hey, the trick is," but it really is just finding what works best for you applying it. So let's go ahead and pull out some grease. And uh, people ask me what I use for lubricating stabilizers. That's lubricating switches. These two mixed 80% of this, 20% of that. Excuse me. It's called my super lube budget method. I put them in little bottles like this and I can do a batch of 90 switches in under a half hour while watching TV. Um, it works. I've perfected it to the point now that I used to put a little too much, but I learned. And now I, I've got it down to, I mean, Pat, people are like, wow, yeah, these are nicely lubed. You know, how long did it take you? And they don't believe me when I tell them, so. Um, I do have a couple videos on my channel if you guys are interested about how I do that. Sorry, I was sitting on a USB cable. All right, so this is the easiest part of this. So if we go ahead and stick it in. Make sure I like to bring up the lube to the top so that we have enough. Now we want to lube it. We don't want to douse it, but we want it to be nice and covered. And we want to go past the elbow. We'll go grab the stabilizer. Stick it straight in. We want to make sure it goes to both of the back holes, and then it's going to go at a down, a little bit of an in, in angle towards you. And then we want to snap it into place. All right, and it looks like it's moving nice and tight. So let's go ahead and do that for the other side. Ooh, a little much. Yeah, that's 
a, it's a delicate balance. I mean, too much, you're gonna get mushy. Not enough, it's just not gonna slide right. So, but as long as you can see it on there, you're pretty much good. So, yeah, I got a little too much. Come on, come on. All right. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so find the top of the stabilizer, go in through the hole in the back, go down a little bit, make sure it was the right way, and then pan. All right, so we should be able to make sure that they both turn freely in there. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and lock these into place. One thing that some people don't do, and it's not necessarily always because sometimes it'll pop into place, but sometimes that tab, that's your lock tab for your stabilizers. Um, so just so that you guys can see, I know I I wasn't recording, so because I did show how loose they were before, but see, they are on there and they are not moving. And All right, so we got the stabilizers in. Um, they all seem to work. They're all activating, and as you can hear, there's really no sound. So that's why we got that padding down there. Now, we can go ahead um, oh, wait a minute, that's right. We still need to do the Tempest tape mod. foamed and we have now Tempest tape modded it for two different colors of tape because that's what we had. Don't know where my I know as soon as I get up I'll find it somewhere. It's probably in my other office. So here we go and I think this plate PCB combo is about ready to go. We can go ahead and stick these that came in with it, which is pretty nice. I like the way that they um, are installed because they actually add a little bit of dampening to the key. Um, or at least, you know, that echo chamber so they don't sit just in there. You push them in. Besides this little odd issue of the first row being more facing in that one. I mean, that one's sticking up because the USB port's right there. That's the only reason. So it's like, why didn't you use a daughter board? I mean, <laughs> other than that though, this keyboard I have used since I've got it and it's been over a year. Uh, and all I did was lubricate the stabilizers and I was happy. I mean, I, was, I knew that it needed some more work, but at no point did I complain. Out of the box, this is, I, I, I know this is sacrilege, but out of the box, this is better than an LK67 out of the box. They both can sound amazing once you put the work and effort to it. But out of the box, the Ducato VN66 was just a much better keyboard stock. Um, it was, you know, pop it off, get ready to go. So um, I know the silicone's still gonna be curing. We got about two more hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this here. And once the bottom case is done curing, we can start looking at some options with uh, with these gaskets and go ahead and start putting it together. Um, one thing I guess I could go ahead and do, since we're here, is uh, we can go ahead and support the back end. And we're going to be putting in today. I'm 
and doing a holy polar. This is a nice heavy tactile. It's a dual stage spring. It's a Fecker, Holy Panda housing and dual stage spring with the stem of an Ajaz banana. So basically I've taken both of these. Um, and I mean, this is a good one on its own, but once I put the stem of the pineapple in here, it has a nice pop to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and load these up on here and then I will be back once um, we are ready to go with the bottom case once the silicone is cured, okay? One thing I did forget to do uh, that we're going to need to do before getting into the uh, putting this back in the case is finding those two stud holes where this sits at. All right, so we've got those holes there so the studs can sit in place. We have taken care of this, and let's hope it's going to sound good. I I've already loaded these up on board before, but these actually I should call holy potassium pandas because I are polars, holy potassium polars. The first version of polars I did were using purple panda stems. Um, now they're both similar, but they are different tactiles. Uh, so I may just call this one the holy potassium polar polypolar potassium I don't know um, it's just a Franken switch only I do know that there are a handful of people out there that have made them and used them and like them so uh, who knows maybe I have a future as a switch designer all right so we're gonna go ahead and leave this here for now we will come back shortly once the uh, silicone has fully cured and we'll finish up this build and do a sound test all right so the silicone has cleared. Now around the battery, I did take some zip and fit and I just placed it around the battery just so we've got that area covered as well. Um, I may put a layer of tape on it or not. Let me see. Right now I want to clean off um, any excess silicone that we can go ahead and get rid of like any of this sitting on the top of these the leg bracket. Let's see. That looks good actually. That's completely dry. Alright, then we're gonna have to, we have to pull this corner up because we're gonna have to make a hole in order for the mode switch or um, I forget what keyboard I'm talking about. Yeah, the mode switch. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to try to pull this puppy out in one piece. See how we're connected. If there was a little bit more room, I probably could have made the entire thing one piece, but this rib right here um, prevented me from doing that. So here, what we're gonna need to do is a little bit of magic. Not really, but I'm just gonna have to be real careful. I'm gonna take a blade out, and we wanna basically cut around make sure that we've got enough room for this entire thing to go through there and still be connected to the PCB. I almost said motherboard. I mean, technically, I guess that would be correct. The PCB is the motherboard of the keyboard. So I'm gonna be a little generous here so that we're not, I'm gonna cut too many times, hopefully.
probably should have put in a brand new blade. This one is a bit dull. I'm having trouble cutting silicone with it. All right. I do not think I have enough. No. It's not going to be able to slide both ways. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it will. Oh. Looks like I actually got enough of it out. Maybe a little too much on the bottom, but that's fine. As long as you can get that motherboard in there, with that still attached and going through the hole, then we're golden. Alright. There we go. Alright. The JST is in there. Now, oh. Did forget something. Alright, I went ahead and replaced this gasket, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the top stiffer gaskets up there. I'm taking these out. These are, I mean, they're rubber, but they're really hard. Like, there's, like, no compression. So what I'm thinking is if it's got a little bit of play going down, but then, obviously, no bumper going back up, I'm going to see if that works. So, basically, I'm taking these and replacing them with these, which are extra gaskets from a plate kit, I believe. I'm not sure, but this is the softer, I wanna say this is the Poron. So, basically I'm just doing this. And then. So we've gone ahead and replaced the uh, bottom housing or bottom part of the case's uh, gaskets. Um, this one. Yeah, these almost want to give me give me a sense of wanting to put another one down in there because they don't seem wide enough. But before I try anything, I just want to see if we can get everything to fit in place as it should. So we need to make sure that we get this over the gaskets, but it's got to be into the... Okay, yeah, that goes in. And that's going in. And there's the mode switch. It's a little tight, but it's in there. So, and... Huh, look at that. We have added uh, the tiniest amount of flex, but we've added some flex to it. That definitely made a difference. I'm... Um, hmm. So, uh, part of me is like, why don't we stick some of those gaskets up here? So that we're actually having two spots where the gaskets meet. I don't think it could hurt. Ah, eh, you know what? Let's let's put it together this way. I, I may end up making it more room than it needs to be, or making taking up more room than it needs to be taken up. So, right here, we already got better than what it comes with stock. So we're gonna go ahead and close her up. Was, yeah. If I added more than closing her up, I think would have been a little bit more of an issue. But I think sticking with just this amount. Uh, get a bottom layer of silicone. It's pretty tight. Wow. This feels like a solid kit. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, ever since I got this kit, I, this keyboard, I have enjoyed it. I love the LK67 for reasons, but I like this one. If I had to pick one or the other, I would honestly pick this one because it's just better built. The LK67 is a great board though, but this is just, it's its just more solid. Um, it's definitely made by the same people that do the uh, um, 
the key duos, the NJ80, the manufacturing is the same, uh, and it's just, it's just nice. So for this one, what I wanted to do was try a new set that I've got. Um, I bought Mizu before. He liked uh, Mizu better than the custom keycap set that we had made for him, so he took my Mizu, and now I I went and bought another double shot Mizu from AliExpress. This is uh, from Young Kui, I believe. So usually I put a little bit of padding in, in the space bars, but in this instance, I really don't think there's a need for it. So I'm going to go ahead and load this up with some keys um, and we'll go from there. Well, and here we are, the Ducato VN66 loaded up with my Franken switch, the potassium holy polar, uh, basically the uh, stem from a Ajaz banana inside of the housing of a Fecker holy panda using its switch. Say so one thing is missing here though. We need a knob. So this is the knob that I have picked out for this. I know the blue doesn't quite match. Um, I could have gone with a black, but I had black on here before. So I decided to, why not try? Uh, that's it. Alright, so flat side here. And we turn it. Lock this puppy into place. Lock to the flat side. Alright. So anyway, let's go ahead and plug her up and see what she looks like with lights. So now what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and leave you guys with a sound test of this fully modded kit. Um, and I'd love some feedback. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Did I, did I improve upon the sound or did I not do much or should I do something different? Now, your feedback is always welcome. Obviously, you know, how a keyboard sounds, you know, the microphone, the environment, the conditions, whole bunch of different things come into play so if you don't like it please share i mean everyone's opinion to me is important everyone is entitled to their own opinion so um if for some reason you know ah, i wish it did you know it sounded a little bit deeper or a little bit more popular or a little bit this or a little bit that who knows maybe i'll come back to it but anyway um i'm gonna go ahead and get on with the sound test and then uh leave you until the next transmission i've got i'm working on the tkl uh, series for all the budget TKL boards available right now uh, in late 2022. But until then, keep calm and keyboard on.